the Bull Armory TAC 4.25. Let's check it out. Guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bull Armory TAC 4.25. And ever since that I've been reading about this handgun, I've really been excited to check it out. Uh, this is a 1911 with a 2011 grip module, holds 18 plus one. Uh, it's got all those features that made the 1911 legendary, and yet it just ups that capacity. It's optics ready. It has suppressor height sights that'll co-witness and it has all those features you're looking for for your 1911. Really the big plus for Bull Armory is the price. One of the, their mottos is to make really high quality firearms for as reasonable as they can make them. Uh, upping their efficiency, upping the, the equipment they use, and really producing some really fine quality firearms and yet come in considerably cheaper than its staccato counterpart. Uh, and I mean considerable. And yet, to me, the quality is equal to or maybe even surpassed. Now, I've had some experience with Bull Armory in the past with their just standard 1911 Commander version. And the tolerances and the finish on that handgun are just very impressive. Uh, and then the SAS Ultralight, which is just one of my favorite concealed carry options, which is a 2011 style, but it's just a kind of a micro of this pistol. Uh, and then some of their striker polymer frame pistols, which we have reviewed one. We've got another one coming up. Bull Armory is just knocking it out of the ballpark. But guys, honestly, dealing with a lot of guns, uh, I have been probably more impressed with the Bull Armory series than any other handgun I've dealt with in the past few years. And they're really the new kid on the block, but they are putting together some really high quality firearms. And we really appreciate Bull Armory for sending the TAC 4.25 for this review. And guys, I've been excited about this review for a good while. And hopefully I can translate that to why I love this to you. Bull Armory based out of Israel. Guys, they're putting together some very impressive firearms. And one of the great things is, is the quality is just top notch. I mean, they're, they're excellent, uh, the fit and finish, but yet the price is more reasonable. Uh, this is a competitor really to the Staccato uh, and the Staccato P for that matter. Uh, and this is a 2011 grip shell or grip module. And then we have a 1911 uh, top half that just make this a high capacity 1911 pistol. And of course, these have been popular for a number of years. STI kind of got things started. And yet the price is considerably less. And so a lot of people have looked at the 2011 style pistols and thought, man, I just can't afford it. And this brings it to a more obtainable price point, And yet you're not losing anything. These guns are just really well done. And we're going to get into a lot of the details. But the first gun that I reviewed by Bull Armory was their 1911 Commander. Uh, and just a very well-finished handgun. Um, the spring tension on the slide, the functionality, uh, just how it felt, the quality. It was just excellent. Uh, then we got one of the SAS Ultralights. Uh, man, this is now part of my concealed carry rotation. I love this handgun. It does have the 2011 style uh, double magazine, and yet it's a 1911 uh, as far as the functioning. And uh, this has been a surprisingly pleasant gun to shoot. I thought it would be a little bit snappy, but it was not. It's been great. Uh, and so I was really excited when they announced that they were making the TAC 4.25, and they wanted to send one for a review. 
I also went to Tactical Response and shot one of their polymer striker fire pistols. Um, it was actually the Cleaver. Uh, this is an upgraded version of the hatchet. Uh, it's based a lot on the Glock style, and but it, yet it really sets the bar very high. And really, again, price-wise, this is very reasonable. So Bull Armory, and one of their mottos is that they're going to produce firearms the best quality that they can possibly produce for the lowest price that they can offer, and that's what they're doing. Uh, one of the big pluses for Bull Armory is they pretty much sell direct. And so, you know, if you want a Bull Armory, you've got to go direct, and yet you're going to really get some good savings. But today we're looking at the TAC 4.25. Let's go ahead and get things started. Drop our magazine, 18 plus 1. You do get two magazines, uh, pull back, got empty chamber. And one thing I want to mention about the magazines is they are proprietary. Uh, and that means that these are made for the SAS-2 configuration. Nine millimeters are shorter than 45 uh, and they're not quite as thick. And so really you need a spacer to be able to push that nine millimeter forward. It's one of the reasons the Prodigy had some issues is because of the magazine fitment and can happen with any of your 2011 magazines. This optimizes your 2011 style magazine to be able to have those multiple rounds and double stack and yet function nine millimeter. So these magazines are really formulated to be very reliable. This gun is, uh, you know, again, taking a 1911 and you're just upping it to 18 plus one. And the one thing is the grip, while it's thicker, it's not a heck of a lot thicker than your 1911. Uh, and honestly, it gives you more uh, control over the firearm because this polymer grip shell has been textured uh, and checkered, checkering on the front strap, checkering on the back strap, laser etch texturing all the way on the side panels. Uh, and it's not too aggressive, but it is aggressive enough to where when you grab it, it locks in. I've got ambidextrous safeties. Nice commander style hammer, very high ride beaver tail, allow you to get your hand really high up on the pistol. One thing though that is an advantage is that it is optics ready. And for a 1911, that has just really started coming in. We've got an RMR footprint here. We've got suppressor height sights. So you're able to co-witness with your red dot uh, with these sights. Uh, the slide is a stainless steel. It does have a PVD finish on it. So it's going to be just pretty much impervious to any kind of weather. Uh, and then of course with the stainless that even adds to it, but it gives it a really strong finish. And it does, it's kind of a matte finish. Aluminum receiver here or frame uh, on the pro model of the Bull Armory 4.25. It is a steel frame. So it added quite a bit of weight. And so for this one, they wanted to reduce the weight and make this a, a easier to carry. Uh, of course, the polymer comes around the trigger guard and comes all the way down. And this has really been a proven system, again, with STI, Staccato, and of course now with Springfield Armory's uh, Prodigy. Uh, this is just a, uh, a great way to be able to have that high capacity. Uh, have an aluminum mag well that, um, you know, it can be removed, but it definitely aids in getting those magazines out. And when you wrap your hand around it, it actually braces your hand uh, to get it in a good position. Now I have medium sized hands, we're a l large glove size, but uh, you know, there's guys with a lot bigger hands that are still gonna be able to utilize this magazine well. But again, it can be removed. 1913 Picatinny Rail, we have four slots. Uh, we do have the serial number and made in Israel. Uh, there is some texturing right here on the front. The undercuts are very nice and they allow your hand just to get that much higher. Now you will get a double undercut, which is important. One thing is a lot of times people will undercut here, but then it knocks your natural point of aim off. And so this allows you to adjust it with this cut right here, this little divot. Uh, and we have checkering right here on the slide stop. We have a double or ambidextrous frame safety, uh, this extended. And uh, you know, guys, if you're shooting weak hand, this really comes in handy. And I advise to shoot weekend and practice with that. And with that extended safety, it gives you a place to put your thumb to help with managing recoil. And as you bring in your second hand, right here, because of this Picatinny rail in the slot, you can actually fit your thumb here. And this allows for really good recoil management. Now it's nine millimeter uh, in this size pistol and the recoil is very manageable. So, but this just gives you more capability to control the handgun.
Slide serrations are nice and wide and they are so easy to grab hold of. Uh, and so it just makes it simple. Of course, if you have a, a red dot sight, that even makes it easier. Stainless steel barrel is 4.25 inches and it is a bull barrel and it's beautifully polished. We have a one piece guide rod system. We'll look at that when we break it down. 11 pound spring. So really when you're bringing this slide back, it does not take a lot of effort. I mean, it just glides back. And one of the things about a 1911 is you have your slide rails all along the frame and then with your slide, it gives you a lot of frame to slide contact, which that's one of the big pluses for a 1911. We have slide cuts uh, just to relieve weight, uh, no ported barrel, no fluted barrel, which actually helps to keep the price down. Front sight is dovetailed in, of course, so is the rear sight, and you can change those out if you want. Mag release is enlarged, so it makes it easy to get those mags out. But a very well-made, well-finished gun. Uh, man, the slide to frame fit is just lock solid. Uh, I'm getting zero movement here. Uh, of course, at the front, same thing. There's just no movement. Uh, with the bull barrel, with that one-piece guide rod, it just locks this in and it gives it really good accuracy, which we'll check out. The beaver tail, very well fitted. Uh, and some of the things they'll do is like here with this texturing underneath. I mean, this is just extra and it, yet it really sets this apart, just like here on the slide stop. Tack 4.25 right on the slide and then here with the bull armory. Not a lot written on the side. And this is the SAS-2 series of 2011, 1911s that they offer. They, they do have a number of different ones, a lot that are just like race guns, competitive guns, and then they make just dedicated self-defense or EDC firearms. And with the TAC Pro, it is just a heavier gun. This just brings it down to make it much lighter. Uh, and so to me, this has everything that makes this an excellent self-defense gun, but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that some of their others have that are beautiful and great, but this is very practical, and yet it's just an incredibly beautiful gun over, all the way through. Now the trigger is a big deal because 1911s have exceptional triggers, uh, and mainly because they're so simple, they just uh, pull back, it trips the sear, uh, so it makes it a really crisp trigger break. We're going to test the movement. I have just some take up right here and it hits a definite wall. Uh, from here, super nice, crisp break, reset right there. I mean, it's a very fast reset. We're going to check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Two pounds, two ounces. Man, that is a sweet trigger. Two pounds, 0.7 ounces. Now, Bull Armory states on their website that it's three to three and a half pounds. But one of the things to me, sometimes you know, a two pound trigger can be very light and you can fire it before you mean to. But one of the things I love about it is again, there is a definite wall. I mean, you hit that wall right there and it just stops. And when you just squeeze, you know, you can pull that round off. And I really like the trigger on this. In fact, I didn't realize it was that light until I tested it. Big thank you to Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. All made in the USA. Excellent shooting ammunition. One of the biggest suppliers of ammo in the country. Uh, also, we appreciate Lula loaders, especially when we have so many magazines to load. It makes life easier. The Bull Armory TAC 4.25 inch barrels, the SAS-2. This is, you know, really a 2011. It has your double stack magazine, the polymer frame grip shell, and um, it just has a really good feel to it, being high capacity in that 1911 slide design. Uh, with this, you have your optic on top, and this is, Bull Armory is just doing some fantastic stuff. I mean, their, their quality is over the top. You know, the sights are co-witnessing with the red dot. Of course, you can go without it. I think it adds a little mass to the slide. Uh, it's a little different for a 1911 or 2011 style. But lightweight frame, it's a lightweight gun. 
and so it's it's just got a lot of just cool features all the way through it it's almost like it's there's so many things about it that it's hard to start i mean we've talked about it already but the grip is very textured uh, the magwell helps to keep your hand just in place the serrations on the slide the cuts just lighten the slide so it's a fairly light firearm to be a pretty big size but uh Ambidextrous safeties, beaver tail lets you get really high up. Stays on target. I, I don't know, guys. You know, staccato, or they're nice, but uh, to me, the bull armory takes it up a notch. We've had zero malfunctions out of this thing, and I didn't expect to. Beautiful gun. Now for disassembly, uh, we're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, it's empty. Uh, of course, 1911s are a little different, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring back the handgun and we're going to match the slide stop to this little notch. And once it's in line, you turn it over, and right here is your slide stop. And it's recessed a little bit too much for my thumb, so we're just going to push it out. And actually, it popped out. So here is your slide stop. A lot of times, it'll just come partially out. Then we start pulling off our slide. Just get your thumb on the recoil system to keep it from flying out because it is under spring tension. Now, we're going to take our recoil guide rod. We're going to take this little tool, and this is provided with your... Uh, your pistol and then right here is a hole in the guide rod so you just place it in there and what that does is you release it is it captures the guide rod it captures that spring and that allows you just to bring out the recoil system just like this and it's going to stay in this position and then we take our barrel take your barrel link put it down just pull it right out the front now this bull barrel <laughs> in itself is just beautiful uh, it's really thick. It's going to give you a little extra weight uh, at the end, and yet with the lightweight frame and everything, it's going to make it just very well balanced. This is a beautiful barrel. Of course, it is ramped, and um, uh, they just did a great job. Here with the slide, again, very well finished. The interior is done very well. I mean, they, they take a lot of pride in uh, building these. And then with your frame, of course, with the 1911, it's pretty straightforward. You do have these extended frame rails again, which with the contact with the slide, it's gonna make it really smooth. Of course, here you can see a little better with the frame that's aluminum, it comes up and around, and then we have the polymer that comes down, which can be removed, but I would not recommend it. There's no reason really to do that. And so it just makes this really lightweight, I mean, it's light, but yet the aluminum gives it a little bit of heft over just polymer. And so to me, it just really balances the pistol out. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip, uh, to reassemble. We're going to put our barrel back in, and we go right down the front. Lock it in. I'm going to take my barrel link, and I'm going to pull it up like this. And then I'm going to take my guide rod system, recoil system, and then you want to just go ahead and put it home and lock it forward, just like that. And that'll give you room to be able to get to this little tool. And as I give it a little bit of tension, I can pull it out and then slowly release it, just like this. Now, again, you want to just hold on to that. It's not going to necessarily come off, but if it slips, it can. And then we're going to make sure our barrel link is in the down position and put it back over our frame. And once you see that little barrel link come out, take your slide stop, and sometimes you have to take and just make sure that it's lined up, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my slide stop, go ahead and drop it in. Uh, then I'm gonna bring back my slide to match that little notch right there for my slide stop. And I wanna lift it up. Be careful, because you do not want to scratch your frame. It's called the idiot scratch. <laughs> and then we're going to have to get past the detent, so we just push up and in, just like that. Release, and you're back in business. Put your magazine in, test for function, 
and we're good. The gun comes in a standard cardboard box and we have a really nice case. Uh, and this gun case, very well done. I've got it unzipped, but you have carry handles. Uh, you have a small little pocket here at the front. And then when we open it up, uh, you know, you have your owner's manual, comes in this really cool pouch and your sticker, and we've got cleaning rods and kit, things like that. But the pistol, guys, this is just excellent. I mean, it fits, they've got these straps, you can put it in there. They have two additional straps, you could actually fit two handguns in it. And then we have our cover plate for our RMR cut. And then here at the top, we do have an area to hold your magazines. Really like the case. I can get boxes a lot of times with guns, and they just end up going in storage. So this is something that you could definitely use. And uh, guys, I'm telling you, this is really a nice case. Now this should fit a lot of your standard 2011 style holsters with a rail. Uh, and there are some models out there. Uh, Priority One holsters. Uh, this is one that's inside the waistband. They do make others that is just excellent spring steel. Uh, in fact, I went ahead and got one for my ultralight and um, just makes it an excellent package. But that's one thing that a lot of people wonder about is what about holsters? And this is one that has been a little bit of a trouble until I found Priority One, which actually Ben at Bull Armory recommended and sent this one for me to to have because he knew that I was loving this handgun. But again, these are just great holster options. And again, there are others out there. When it comes to price, uh, these run $1,760, which some guys are gonna you know, say, wow, that's way too much. I, you know, I can't afford that. And I understand, because that is a lot of money. Uh, if you look at the Staccato P, which is pretty much the same configuration, same barrel length, same mag capacity, a lot of the same features, Honestly, I feel like the bull surpasses some of the quality features. I mean, that's just my opinion. Uh, we're looking at the Staccato P for $2,499. So that's about $650 difference in the price. And you're not losing anything with the bull armory. Now, with the bull armories, you buy them direct, and that actually helps keep the price low. $1,760 is a lot of money. But when you're looking at the 2011s, that's just what it costs to produce these type handguns. You know, the Pros 18 plus one in a 1911 style pistol. That is a huge pro. Uh, the polymer grip shell keeps the weight down. Uh, the aluminum keeps the weight down over their Pro model, which is stainless. If you're competing and you're doing a lot of that kind of stuff, you might want the extra weight. But for everyday carry, this really is just an exceptional way to go. Uh, great slide serrations, optics ready, uh, one-third co-witness with these suppressor height sights, and the fit and finish is just excellent. You want to remove the mag well? You can, no problem. If you want to go with just a cover plate here and no optic, that's great too, you can do that. It does have the accessory rail. It does come with a nice case and all that. So, you know, guys, it is just an excellent pistol. As far as cons go, price, you know, it's just according to what you can afford. It's on the upper tier. That's a con for a lot. Uh, but, you know, for those who are really looking for a 2011 and willing to spend some money, uh, this is going to be one of the best deals you can find out there for something that's really put together extremely well. So guys, the Bull Armory TAC 4.25. What an excellent EDC gun, range gun, competitive option. It's just one of those handguns with that 1911 style, yet you have that 2011 mag capacity and all the features that go around a really top-notch handgun. And the price definitely comes in a heck of a lot cheaper. Gives you more for ammo, which is always a good thing. So check out the Bull Armory TAC 4.25 or any of the Bull Armory handguns. I mean, they're really making their name for themselves in the firearm world. And again, a big thanks to Bull Armory for sending the TAC 4.25 for this review. Uh, guys, there are some really awesome guns out there, and sometimes the price can be out of sight. This gives you really a dream gun for a more obtainable price point, and yet you get all the quality. I've been very impressed with Bull Armory. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
get a uh, nice, you get something here, something nice. Okay, I don't know what that is. I'll tell you guys, when I took it to the range, I thought it would just be, no, 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 no. And the legendary feel and the feel, I like the feel things, like feel them, feel them, feel them, feel them, feel them, feel them, feel them. It's 18 plus one, uh, it's, yeah. And then a stainless steel slide. Okay, I've already said, I'm gonna say all that during the review. And I know I'm, I'm really praising these guns, but I'm telling you that, you know, the sun rests and it rises on this gun. I mean, it just rises and just, you see like unicorns and rainbows, you know, and all that. Everything that I've had any contact with, uh, contact, I've had contacts with these pistols. Just contact, contact. I'm so impressed. All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a, today we're going to be taking a look at the Mr. Sully. But coming in at a much more expensive price. Why does FedEx have to come three times today? And they're not bringing me anything. 